Oh, hi. I didn't see you guys there again. So anyway, in this week's episode, we're going to be talking about major rumors that have been circulating around for tech companies and a whole bunch of their technology products. We're also going to be talking this big CEO shuffle that's been going around for a few companies. And most of all, we're just going to be talking tech as normal, and we still cannot believe that we actually made it to episode 2. It seemed like such a terrible idea in the beginning, but you guys are starting to make us think otherwise. Which reminds me, I better go sell my assets and all my stocks that I have for BlackBerry. Seemed like such a great idea in 2005. Oh, and also, cue theme music. Hey guys, what's up? It's Connor Mitchell from Dragon Rider Network, and welcome to episode 2 of DRN Update. This is the week of January 28th, day 128. Pretty cool. So anyway, this show is basically where we talk about tech. If you've seen the first episode, you definitely know where we're coming from. So anyway, let's talk about the tech stories of this week. So Google announced that Google Plus would now be accepting teenagers into their wide realm of social networking. I really have no idea what Google was afraid of when they were saying it could only be for 18 year olds and above. Were we afraid that we would mess it up? Were we afraid that we would say bad things about it? Or were we just afraid that we would not talk about it? Google, teenagers are the most talking people on the face of the planet. There's nothing we won't talk about. Google, seriously, what do you think is the worst thing that's going to happen? Somebody's going to get on Google Plus like, Hey listen, come to this address and get in my van. I'm just kidding guys, Google Plus is not the place for child abduction. That's what MySpace was for. Apple had a very good week for investors and people who are financially involved in the company when they reported that over 37 million iPhones were sold this last quarter, a record-breaking quarter for the now over $400 billion company which has now skyrocketed to Apple to the number one most valuable company in the world again. To me, it's really great to see a company skyrocket to the top without the sale of gasoline or the use of slave labor. Oh, right. Facebook recently notified all its users that it would be switching everybody over to the brand new timeline format. I really have to give props to Facebook for this because what are you going to do but implement features when your network is no longer considered cool? But you know what? In a future where people can just find out anything about me on a certain day of a certain month of a certain year, that would give me loads of reasons to stay on Facebook. Now I don't know about you guys, but I'm feeling a little bit of a CEO shuffle coming on. The dual CEOs were each given their fair share of the boot when RIM had actually figured out they had been making the same exact product since 2005. Honestly, ever since the iPhone had come out, RIM had really been making only one idea suggestion for every single one of the products they had made. Let's change the number, and maybe they won't catch on. HP also gave former Palm Chief the fair share of the boot this week when they had let him go after his two-year contract with the company had expired. Man, leave it to the Palm chief executive officer to behave for HP the exact same way the products from Palm behaved for all of us. After a few years, we really forgot what they were for in the first place. Well, it's time to head over to the rumor mill to see what people are saying may or may not happen in this completely uncertain world of technology. So the new Xbox, supposed to be coming out in 2013, which everybody is calling now the Xbox 720, has been on the minds of gamers more than, how can I stop buying the same Call of Duty game every single year? 
We all know it's going to be even more powerful than the current version, possibly a little bit sleeker, and odds are, may not be backwards compatible. But what don't we know? Well, we don't know whether it's going to incorporate Xbox Connect even further than the way this current version did, or is the way I like to call it, a joke. Connect in the current Xbox 360 was a bit of a party trick on Microsoft's part. A way to sell the new Xbox 360 with a newer invention that they had put out, hopefully getting hacked so much that they would gain some few ideas from it and put them in the new model. Well, we haven't really seen any of that yet, but hopefully this new model will actually bring stuff like that to the table. I swear, Kinect must feel like Steve Wozniak after 2007, completely left out of the picture. Speaking of the long gone past, let's talk about the Wii. Nintendo's long gone pride and glory has basically been completely unchanged since 2006 in its arrival. And now, at the time when the market is saying it is simply no longer competition, the Wii U comes to the rescue in a scramble attempt to get Nintendo back at the top of the gaming world. Oh Nintendo, you try so hard. So the Nintendo U, as they are calling it, instead of using motion controllers, would use a 3-inch D-pad with buttons on each side and a screen that would be controlled by a stylus. Wow. You know, I think the last time something went that far back, it was using a flux capacitor. But you know, at least Nintendo does something that Microsoft isn't. They're making it the primary controller for the Nintendo, unlike Kinect for the Xbox. The Xbox really hasn't evolved in that much in terms of control. The Kinect was just a little something cool to add on top and to make it seem like you were getting up and doing all this stuff. That's where the benefit came in. However, what I see as a downslide for Nintendo would definitely be the fact that game programmers now have to work around this, which will definitely take a toll on games like first-person shooters, title games, and pretty much anything else. And here's the really surprising part. Nintendo themselves said they might be dropping the name Wii U. And in my mind, this thoroughly reinforces my theory that the Wii is most likely going to be killed off within a few years. Maybe not the product itself, but definitely the brand of Wii. Much like the way the GameCube was killed off and brought into a Wii, it still uses the games as usual, but it's a brand new kind of system. Unfortunate but true, people who are leaving the Wii are leaving for a bigger, better, and brighter future with higher resolution displays, better gameplay on both the Xbox 360 and the PlayStation 3. Oh, and did I also mention they both use motion controls and they're both better than what the Wii has? But I do believe that the Nintendo Wii will be killed off most likely by next year when they introduce what I am now calling Product X. And our last rumor comes from Foxconn, the factory where the iPhone has been produced for all these lovely years says that it is now currently working on the next generation iPhone, which people are still surprisingly calling the iPhone 5. Little quick lesson for Apple right here. Apple, if you really want to sell a product as best you can, whatever people are calling it on the web, call it that. If everybody's calling it the iPhone 5, call it the iPhone 5, even if it's not true. But in this case, call it the iPhone 6. Because those people who are begging for the iPhone 5 obviously don't know what an iPhone 5 really is. Alright, I'm sorry, what was I talking about? Oh yeah, the not-so-iPhone 5. So anyway, the rumors about this is that it's going to have a 4-inch diagonal screen. Much bigger than the one that it currently has. Moderately believable, but we'll buy it now. It's going to have a quad processor. This one I can definitely believe because so many other phones are gaining quad processors 
and the iPhone, with the help of A6, I believe that's what it's on currently, and help gain a much faster phone. 3D, no. In the iPhone, no. I don't see 3D happening anytime soon. The iPhone will be able to teleport you inside the movie before it gains 3D. But of course, one feature that the iPhone should add, it should tell every single person who buys it in advance when they will be buying the very next iPhone. Finally, oh, come on. I thought we just got over this in the last episode. Like I've said before, I don't want this show to be about politics. And tonight, it's not. I'm guaranteeing you that. Just so that way I can explain a little bit on the background of this, Twitter is going to begin censoring itself in certain countries. Why? Why limit yourself, Twitter? And now, a new bill called ACTA, even though SOPA and PIPA have been shelved, ACTA now looks to be the new threat. Which brings me now to my final segment. For the longest time, I've been saying that the internet will never be censored. I really had this belief that nobody would be able to get a hold to censor the internet. But now, after many things have started happening, the CEO of Mega Upload is arrested and is now being sentenced to 50 years in prison. Twitter is now censoring itself in different countries. And now another new bill, after we had the biggest internet protest in history, is now taking form across the countries and across the sea, and would be a globalized bill to censor the internet. This is my idea. We set up a new bill that prevents stuff like this. Piracy is the concern, because everybody becomes fearful when they hear the word piracy or stealing. What I say is that if you create a bill like this, you not only guarantee piracy, you encourage it. Because when the iPhone and all of these devices claim that they could not be jailbroken, what's the first thing people started to try and do? Jailbreak them. And now when the iPhone 5 comes out, or the iPhone 4S in this case, they're jailbroken within 24 hours. Piracy is not going to be fought by stopping content creators and stopping websites who you believe are infringing copyright. That happens all the time, and it will continue to. What really needs to happen is a bill, like I don't know, let's stay out of it, Bill. I just made that up, and already it sounds like a great idea. So what I plan to do here tonight is propose a bill that would help promote creativity, but at the same time promote those creating the creativity products to discourage piracy. And since we now have bills called SOPA, PIPA, and ACTA, now it's time for me to give this bill a name and call it the Watch Us Do What We Do Best Act. Or, if you want to shorten it down, the Wood Wood Buh. It makes more sense when you say it out. Alright, so here goes each part of the legislation. Part 1. Pirating can no longer be called pirating. In order to fit with today's modern standards and ways of calling people who take content or just try and piss people off, it will be called property trolling. Property trollers must be dealt directly with the person of whom they trolled. Property trollers cannot be dealt with anybody outside of this group unless brought in by the creator or user themselves. These people are not limited to, can, these people can include but are not limited to friends, family, followers, subscribers, a judge of choice, and of course, other trolls. Part 3. When you are property trolled, what you do from then is your choice, however, it will reflect on how you treat other property trollers. 
if you let one property troller go with your content, however you try and accuse another property troller of stealing your content, you are not allowed to let that first property troller go. You must allow all of them to have your content or none of them. Part 4. Property trollers are allowed a fair and unbiased trial. Obviously, even though everybody knows they did it, a jury of the user's or creator's peers will determine whether or not a certain punishment is acceptable. Whether it's just a slap on the wrist, a strike on their YouTube channel, or complete bannedness from the channel or the page. Part 5. If property trolling is committed upon a corporation or a government, the punishment cannot exceed five years of rickrolling. Part 6. Property trolling can be seen and not heard, but if property trolling is heard and not seen, the user who reported it will not be believed for the next three times, even if property trolling is in fact occurring one of those three times. And finally, Part 7. If you are an organization, a corporation, a government, or a Hollywood industry, you cannot prosecute, arrest, or obtain a warrant against a property troller. You can, however, kindly ask them to stop. And if that doesn't work, oh well. So guys, thank you for tuning in to this week's episode of DRN Update. Be sure to catch us next week when we are doing our next episode of DRN Update, which could be about anything only next week knows. Anyway, guys, be sure to subscribe for more content like this and more episodes like this in the future channel. Be sure to follow us on Twitter, check us out on Facebook, and be sure to check out the website DragonRiderNetwork.com. Anyway, guys, I have been Connor Mitchell with Dragon Rider Network, and I will catch you guys at the next episode. Talk to you then.